Theophyctina parker is just a very small part. This has examination on star preference, substances from kya use kar sakte hain in clubs, coffee, cinnamon, mouthwash, toothpaste, alcohol, and soap. First of all, ensure that the nasal passages are open. Examine each nostril individually. With the patient's eyes closed and one nostril occluded, bring the test substance near the open one. Repeat for the other nostril and compare the two sides. So it's simple. First of all, you have to say that the patient has to say that you have to close your eyes. Okay. And one nostril at a time you have to check. So substances of use can be used. It's a coffee, cinnamon, mouthwash, toothpaste. This should be in your pocket, right? So with the eyes closed, you have to check the nostril individually for the sense of the smell, right? And osmia. And osmia, there is a loss of ability to perceive or recognize not only the scents but also the flavors. Perception of the odor is more important than accurate identification. Perceiving the presence of an odor indicates continuity of the olfactory pathway. Identification of the odor indicates intact cortical function. Now, what are the disorders of the olfactory function? So, the commonest disorder is upper respiratory tract infection, followed by the trauma, usually the head trauma, which is involving the skull fractures, nasal polyp, which is a, a cause of obstruction of the nasal pathway, deviated nasal septum, intranasal tumors, sinus disease, commonly sinusitis, idiopathic conditions, meningiomas of the olfactory groove. Chronic intranasal cocaine use, neuro degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease and the Parkinson's disease, craniocerebral trauma, deficiencies of vitamin B12, B6, or vitamin A. The commonest is the upper respiratory tract infection, sinus diseases, idiopathic conditions, and less common is the neuro degenerative condition like Alzheimer's disease and the Parkinson's disease. This is all about the olfactory nerve. Now moving towards the optic nerve. First of all, just have this picture in your mind. This is how we individually have discussed the pathway of the optic nerve. So the visual field is divided into nasal and temporal fields. Let's have a look. Nasal and the temporal field. Nasal field and the temporal field. Through the lens, the nasal visual field is projected to the temporal retina, and the temporal visual field is projected to the nasal retina. Let's have a look again. This is the temporal field. It's projected into the nasal retina, and the nasal field is projected into the temporal retina. Right? The visual field is divided into two parts: the nasal field and the temporal field, but the projection is opposite. Right? Output projects through the optic nerve. Both nerves merge at the optic chiasm, where the input from the nasal retina of each eye crosses to the opposite hemisphere, while the input from the temporal retina travels exudatorily. So the both nerves, both pathways merge together. This is basically the optic nerve, right? Now, what happens? The optic nerve, the nasal fibers crosses at the chiasm, while the temporal fibers exudatorily move. Right? Only the nasal fiber cross at the chiasm. Right? Forming the optic tract after the chiasm. As a consequence, a left optic tract components can be. Left optic tract contains fibers from the temporal retina of the left eye. And the nasal retina of the right eye, which reflects the right half of the visual field. Right. So left optic tract is containing fibers from the temporal retina of the left eye and the nasal retina of the right eye. It's constituting the homonymous visual field. Similarly, on the right side, optic tract enters the lateral geniculate body. After the synaptic connection in the lateral geniculate body, optic nerve fibers spread widely, 
in the temporal and the parietal lobes forming the optic radiations. So first of all is the optic nerve, then the crosses at the chasm, they constitute the optic tract, they enter the natural geniculate body, they constitute the optic radiations, they are divided into parietal and the temporal fibers, and then they enter into the occipital cortex, right? So this is the optic nerve pathway, right? Radiations converge as they reach the occipital cortex. Now, it's the lihase individually after visual field defects hold, right? Now, individually, we visual field defects could discuss what are problems hold. Number one is the optic nerve. Optic nerve, which resulted in the total blindness. Optic chasm resulting in the bitemporal hemianopia. Optic tract causes homonimus hemianopia, right? Optic radiations divided into two parts, temporal and the parietal. Temporal is responsible for the superior quadrant canopia. Parietal is responsible for the inferior quadrant canopia. And then the occipital cortex, which is responsible for the homonimus hemianopia with the macular scale. I would repeat, when you are talking about the optic nerve, it's resulting in total blindness. When you are talking about the optic chasm, then it's a bi-temporal hemianopia. Optic tract is the homonimus hemianopia. Temporal optic radiation, superior quadrant canopia, and parietal inferior quadrant canopia. Occipital cortex, homonymous hemianopia with the macular sparing. Now, the optic nerve pathway can be affected in multiple sclerosis, in post viral conditions, in autoimmune conditions, it can be idiopathic, it can be resulting in the optic nerve compression. Optic chasm in pituitary adenoma commonly is the commonest cause of pituitary adenoma. Supracellar meningioma or aneurysms, usually the internal carotid artery aneurysms. Optic tract, stroke, and demyelinating diseases. Optic radiations in stroke, tumor, and hematoma. Same with the parietal cortex, stroke, tumor, hematoma. And same with the occipital cortex, stroke, tumor, or hematoma. Right. This is about the optic nerve lesions. Right? Now coming towards the examination. Examination constitutes five parts. Virtual equity, color vision, field of vision, pupillary light reflex, and the frontoscope. Ideally, the eyes are examined individually. You have to close one eye, right? When testing the equity and the color vision, it is important to occlude the eye not being tested. This is the Snellen chart. Some may have a Snellen chart, like the Kandina visual equity check on the This is a bedside assessment chart. It's to hum heart where up there, one arm distance to open up there, individual eye to check where up there, last lines to start with and then escalate to the second last line then third last line and fourth last line this is how we escalate with this is the Ishihara charts this is especially designed for the color version this is an Ishihara chart also color version the color blindness is an excellent condition present about three to four percent of males Disturbance of color vision also occur in neurological disorders. In neurological diseases, the red perception is lost first. Red color desaturation indicates the optic nerve dysfunction. This is the visual field assessment. One arm distance to open our back there, just as you have eight eye to close here, is it as you have field to close there? We have to check the visual fields in four quadrants. Superior temporal, inferior temporal, superior nasal, inferior nasal. Our fingers can move bigger than your fingers can show than either one or two. But you have to check it in the four quadrants, right? Eight visual field who individually assess This is the visual field assessment. Now moving towards the pupillary light reflex. 
Preparing life effects direct or indirect. Life effects should be tested in each eye individually. Examining light should be shown into the eye obliquely with the patient fixing at a distance. Always have the patient fix at a distance when checking the pupillary light reflex. Care response hota hai light affects the brisk constriction followed by slight dilatation. Responses may be noted as prompt, sluggish, or absent. Now the clinical significance. The eye with the optic nerve lesion will show no direct response but will have a normal consensual response to a light stimulus in the other eye, right? People because of the third nerve palsy will have no response on the direct or the consensual reflex. So the people with the optic nerve lesion have intact consensual reflex, but the people with the third nerve lesion have impaired direct response and the consensual reflex. Edutonic pupils. Now the edutonic pupils, unilaterally enlarged pupil. This is a unilaterally enlarged pupil. No other symptoms. Pupillary light reaction absent. So this is a pupillary light re reaction which is absent in this eye, right? In contrast, sorry. Reaction to the near eye is near reflex is preserved. Reaction to the near reflex. This is a reaction to the near reflex, and this is preserved. But the reaction to the light is absent. Eddy syndrome is the association of the pupillary abnormality with the depressed or absent tendon germs. Horner syndrome, sympathetic dysfunction produces ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. A small pupil of the Horner syndrome dilates poorly in the dark. In contrast, the third nerve palsy produces is greater asymmetry in the light. Kya causes open causes include the brain stem lesions, the cluster headache, internal carotid artery dissection, the lung tumors, which is causing the Horner syndrome. This is the Horner syndrome. So here you can appreciate the doses and the meiosis, right? Our child Robertson. small in outline they do not react to the light but very well to the near dissociation they do not react to the light but very well to the near dissociation and there are the small people causes include the neurocephalus marcus gun pupil marcus gun can better check method one should swing the light from eye to eye allowing it to the rest for one second interval and there will be a brisker reaction to the light in a normal unaffected eye and a less brisk reaction or dilation of the people in the affected eye. So comparative to the constriction you are expecting a dilatation of the people in the affected eye, right? This is RAPD, which is a relative afferent pupillary defect or the Marcus gun pupil, and the cause include the optic nerve lesion. Now moving towards the fifth part of the cranial nerve 2 examination, and that is ophthalmoscope. This is a normal fundus picture. What you have to do, color and appearance of the disc may change in a variety of circumstances. This is may change color to abnormally pale in optic atrophy or red with a disc edema. Margins may become obscured due to disc edema. Disc swelling due to increase intracranial pressure is referred to as papilledema. So this is papilledema. The disc margins are obscured here. Papilledema. Increase intracranial pressure exert pressure on the optic nerves, which impairs the exoplasmic flow and produces the axonal edema and increased volume of exoplasm at the disc. 
Solar exon impair venous return from the retina in Gaussian capillaries, then the retinal veins, and ultimately causing hemorrhages. Further axonal swelling leads to elevation of the disc above the retinal surface. Causes of papilledema, raised intracranial pressure is the most common cause. Uh, what are the causes of the raised intracranial pressure? Tumor, abscess, hemorrhage, idiopathic. Obstruction of the ocular venous drainage, that is central retinal vein occlusion. Systemic disorders, hypertension, and vasculitis. Optic nerve damage, that is demyelination, senior, toxin, or sarcoidosis. This is the optic atrophy. The disc margins are very clear, sharp, demarcated, right? Disc is paler than normal and more sharply demarcated from the surrounding retina. Causes of optic atrophy include the previous optic neuritis, ischemic damage, long standing papilledema, optic nerve compression, trauma, certain degenerative conditions like Friedrich's ataxia. So, cranial nerve to flow examination, the expects a homeostasia virtual equity, color vision, field of vision puberty light reflex and the frontoscopic examination. Now this is one of the pictures which is showing a ptosis. This is a unilateral ptosis. This is another earlier picture which is showing a bilateral ptosis. So what are the causes of ptosis? Neurogenic, uh, Horner syndrome, or the third nerve palsy, aponeurotic, also called the senile ptosis, in which the levator palpebrae aponeurosis disinserts from the upper leg tarsal plate. Traumatic process, though with a different etiology, shares the same pathological change. Then there are mechanical causes due to increased upper leg weight, rigidity, which is a scar, edema, redundant skin, or the tumor, and the myotonic is in the myasthenia gravis in the myotonic dystrophy, or in chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia, which is one of the mitochondrial disorders. Its commonest causes may be neurogenic, is by Horner syndrome or third nerve palsy after myotonic. Or myogenic causes can be myasthenia gravis or myotonic dystrophy myotonic. Other are the aponeurotic and mechanical causes. Now the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve examination. It begins with the infection, inspection, ocular malalignment, observed perineally, abnormal lip position, abnormalities of the position of the globe, exhaust thalamus, and note the position of the eyelid. Examination technique. Ocular motility examination is checked in the six cardinal position of gaze, including full lateral gaze to each side, as well as the up gaze and the down gaze when we are looking towards the either side. The target should slowly trace a letter H for the patient to follow. Eye movements should remain smooth and conjugate throughout. The patient who have again one arm distance to have better load. Patients need to know that when you have a finger, you have to follow that. Right? But you have to consider that you have to do all the movements. You have to do all the full up gaze, down gaze, down gaze, down gaze, abduction, down gaze, abduction. You have to do all the muscles and functions. Muscles ki function clear on the top of therapy on the key what you are examining. This is superior rectus, medial rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, and the two oblique muscles, right? Superior rectus, inferior, lateral, and medial recti work in the same direction. Superior rectus, superior in the neutral position, inferior, inferior, lateral, medial. Obliques ke functions opposite. Superior oblique downward move karega, inferior oblique upward move karega. 
आईटी पोजीशन एडप्टेड पोजीशन के अंदर हो ये जरूर मैं क्लियर होना चाहिए कि आई शुड बी इन द एडप्टेड पोजीशन राइट लिवेटर पैथोपेन सुपीरियोरिस लेग का मसल है राइट एंड अपवर्ड मूवमेंट ऑफ द लेग राइट डिप्लोपिया टॉकिंग नॉट पेल्सी प्रोड्यूसेस प्रेजेंस विद अ वर्टिकल डिप्लोपिया especially noticeable going down the stairs abusing your pelvis causes horizontal double version when trying to look towards the side of the bed in the propia of any cause the image projected farthest away from the planned position arises from the paretic eye so isme kya hota hai ki the propia ke andar do images produce hote hain the propia is a double version right दो इमेजेस जो प्रोड्यूस होते हैं उसमें एक मीडियल इमेज होता है एक लिटरल इमेज होता है द इमेज विच इज पार्टल्स इज प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द पैरेटिक आई राइट द सिंपलेस्ट वे इज टू मूव द पेशेंट आई इन टू द पोजिशन विद द ग्रेटेस्ट सेपरेशन ऑफ इमेज देन कवर वन आई इफ द मोर पैरेटल इमेज डिसअपेयर द कवर्ड आई इज द पैरेटिक आई राइट Okay, this is a diagrammatic representation of a third nerve pulse. You can observe the right eye, which is downward and outward gaze, dilated pupils, and eyelid manually elevated due to dosage. This is the third nerve pathway. This will be discussed later individually. The first nerve pulse starts with the starts from the midbrain. It starts from the midbrain here. it crosses the midbrain it comes into the subarachnoid space when it's coming in the subarachnoid space it's coming into in the interaction with the posterior communicating artery it moves forward it crosses the cavernous sinus then it enters the superior orbital fissure and crossing superior orbital fissure is coming into the in interaction with the other cranial nerves right crossing superior orbital fissure it enters the orbit and supply the rectus muscle so the lesions uh, starting from the brain stem right brain stem which is the mid brain it's the weber syndrome weber syndrome kya hota hai epsilateral oculomotor nerve palsy and the contralateral hemiplegia so when you are having a stroke at the mid brain or you are having a hemorrhage at the mid brain then you can have the weber syndrome in which you are having epsilateral oculomotor nerve palsy and contralateral hemiplegias when the nerve is coming into the subarachnoid space as we discuss when it's coming into the subarachnoid space this is the subarachnoid space it can be compressed by the aneurysm which aneurysm it's a posterior communicating artery aneurysm and because of this subarachnoid space it can be the meningitis which can involve the nerve right the nerve moves and towards the direction of the cavernous sinus may occur in isolation or work other cranial nerves like the abducens trochlea first and second division of the trigeminal nerve and sympathetic fiber see some is the interaction map when you are talking about the cavernous sinus cavernous sinus mein third fourth sixth cranial nerve saath hote hain first and second division of the trigeminal nerve yahan pe kya kya ho sakta hai cavernous sinus infiltration by the metastatic disease cavernous sinus lymphoma inflammation associated with the systemic rheumatological diseases intra invasive fungal infection infiltration from the adjacent nasopharyngeal neoplasms cavernous cavernous fistulas multiple etiologies mass effect from the internal cavernous ica or meningioma or tulsa hans tulsa is idiopathic condition right now moving towards the orbital apex orbital apex plane oculomotor nerve abducens nerve trochlear nerve first and second division of the trigeminal nerve or the hyper optic nerve is at night right features of the orbital disease such as proptosis chemosis and gentabular injection may be present etiology include the idiopathic inflammation like the orbital pseudotumor infection such as aspergillosis and mucormycosis 
inflammation or compression from the adjacent sphenoid sinus infection or mucosine which should be considered. So multiple etiologies also here. So the nerve can be in the brainstem, that is in the midbrain. It can be involved in the subarachnoid space. It can be involved at the cavernous sinus, and it can be involved at the orbital end. So this is the third nerve pathway. Now, this is one of the picture. Command is to look towards the right. So you can appreciate that the right eye is looking towards the right side. And the left eye is unable to adapt, right? So what's the problem here? This is a left third nerve pulse. This is dysfunction of the medial pulse, right? It's not able to adapt the eye. Again, the command is to look towards the right. Here the abnormality here. Right eye is this and the left eye is this, right? Left eye is fully adapted, but the right eye is unable to abduct, right? So this is a lateral rectus pelsi, and this is a cranial nerve six part. So we'll stop the uh, cranial nerve examination and today's lecture here. If you have any question you can ask, we'll continue from the fifth onwards from the next cranial nerve examination, that is part two on Thursday, right?